Undefeated Omar Namagomedov 12 0 versus Sergey Morozov 16 and 4 this Wednesday on the Kiesa Magni undercard. And I just want to say, Amanda Magomedov has really impressed me so far, what I've seen of him. He fights from that almost taekwondo stance, baiting his opponents in, countering, whipping in those kicks from all angles. I mean, he throws leg kicks, head kicks, he throws push kicks from the back leg to the face, and then he'll feint that and then whip in head kicks around the side and moves in and out very nicely. As I say, makes his opponent miss and then comes with those kicks. But out of his six wins that he's stopped his opponents, five of them are by submission. So he also has the ability to dominate, to really utilise that Namagamed of wrestling, that combat sambo, get the fight to the floor, initiating some dirty ground and pound and find submissions on his opponent. We've seen that in the Brian Gonzalez fight. Um, he was really kicking him up and then he just took him down to the ground, showcased some of that Namagamed of wrestling dominance, ground and pounded him and got the rear naked choke. In his fight previous to that, we saw him take on Sidema Honorio um, and that was mainly a stand-up battle we saw there. Amanda Magomedov was controlling the cage wonderfully, uh, moving in and feinting, having Honorio uh, commit, and then he'd be countering with those kicks from all angles. You know, we saw uh, kicks to his back, kicks to his side, you know, head kicks, axe kicks, uh, front push kicks to the face. He loves that kick. And then he'll throw it again, feint, and then whip kicks around the side. I mean, really amazing control. As Sade Honorio is well versed in jiu-jitsu, I wanted to see what it was like for Namagomedov to wrestle with him and grapple with him. Um, and we saw Namagomedov literally just smush him on the floor. Um, so he showed complete dominance. And it's very exciting to see how far his future goes because he's shown that having control on the feet like that, as well as having that wrestling, he has a very, very high ceiling here. And I'm excited to see his future. But on Wednesday, he takes on a very powerful, very effective striker in Sergei Morozov. Um, Sergei Morozov shown in his last fight against Josh Rettenhouse the ability to battle over five rounds in a war where he dropped uh, Rettenhouse numerous times with his sharp, crisp boxing ability, that dynamite in his hands. He doesn't load up either on his shots, which I really like of Sergei Morozov. He's very sharp, crisp and to the point with his punches, but they have devastating effect. Um, look at his last fight against Josh Rettenhouse. He dropped him um, at least four times in that fight, um, fighting across five rounds. And Morozov near the end of part of that fight, from rounds three onwards, started taking some big shots himself, but showed toughness, showed grit to battle to that intensity over five rounds. So that's a massive tick on the list for Sergei Morozov in terms of his toughness check. And the ability to go across five rounds is a good trait to have, especially coming into the UFC. Now, looking at his fight previous, he fought Alexander Osetrov and showed, again, dynamite power. I mean, he's that left hook, he whips in so quickly, but generates so much power. I don't know where he gets that power from. He almost folded Osetrov in half with how he finished him. Um, amazing striker there. It's going to be very interesting to see how the two styles mix. We've got an almost a Taekwondo-like martial artist here that darts in and out with his feet, kicks from all angles, likes to keep his opponent at long range. And then can also initiate in some devastating wrestling, grappling and submission work like the Nomaga Medov name suggests. And on the other hand, we've got Sergei Morozov, someone who's almost like a boxer that likes to walk his opponent down, take his space away, then land devastating power shots. And also the ability to grapple that we've seen. I don't think to the level that uh, Omar Nomagomedov has, but he has shown some comfortability on the floor and he's okay with the grappling department, like his fight, in the re like his fight uh, with Rettenhouse in his last fight, we've seen that. But what's interesting here is that both stars essentially cancel each other out. If Omar Nomagomedov is able to get off first, to move in and out with his feet from the beginning, bait Morozov, make Morozov miss, and then whip those counter shots in and control him with defeat, and that spots, wrestle, get it to the floor, um, and then get up and then control again with the, control the striking with that movement, the in and out movement, the lateral movement, the different array of, of kicks, using that range to keep Morozov away. It cancels him out and then Namagomedov wins if he's able to implement that game plan. But on the other hand, if Morozov is able to take that space away, to step forward, not give Omar Namagomedov any space to kick, and then land home with his own power shots, he may be even be able to stop Namagomedov. But what I feel is going to happen is both fighters will stand with each other in an exciting stand-up battle until Omar Namagomedov finds the takedown. And then he'll start in some ground and pound and look for the finish. Whether he'll get it or not is another question as Morozov is a very tough opponent. But I do feel that Omar Namagomedov is going to look to do something special here in his UFC debut at Abu Dhabi in Fight Island with his cousin Habib Namagomedov there. You know, it's going to be a moment. But Morozov is no slouch. He is an amazing fighter and I'm really excited to see both of their futures in the UFC to see what they do what they do um, anyways that's the, my prediction subscribe like and thank you for joining us